All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the uh, welcome back to the AI series that uh, Remote Base has that we have here. I'm your host, Bryce, and uh, we're going to venture into the second episode of this enlightening series. It's, it's been an awesome ride. Um, the exploration of AI's transformative impact across various sectors, and, and it continues to deepen as well. So today we're zoning in on the SaaS space, right? It's particularly focusing on the integration of AI in customer support. So it's going to be a pretty cool conversation. There's a lot that can be done on the on the customer support side, especially with AI. So uh, we're joined here by a distinguished panel of industry experts, and you know, help dive into this into the theme even further. So they have a lot of insights, real world experiences, um, presenting at conferences and whatnot, and everything too. So um, as this discourse uh, unfolds, the aim is to provide SaaS platforms with a roadmap toward seamlessly integrating AI into their customer support uh, systems. So, you know, really leveraging, taking advantage of the AI sphere uh, within customer support without losing the human touch. I think that's key as well. So without further ado, let me introduce our panel. Um, we have uh, Sam Poreshnik. Uh, he's a senior manager uh, of applications and automations at Deal. Hi guys, nice to meet everyone. Uh, I'm Sam, and uh, application automation manager at Deal. That means that we are responsible for all of our internal applications, which obviously includes CX operations and more, and all automations uh, around that. Uh, that's what we're doing for the last ten years, uh, automating with whatever the newest tech is, and the newest tech is now AI. So we're full into implementing AI into our CX process. Awesome. Awesome. Well, welcome. Uh, and Declan Ivory, so VP of Customer Service at Intercom. Hi, folks. Very nice to, to be here today. And thanks for the opportunity to share some insights. Uh, so I'm VP of Customer Support at Intercom. Uh, Intercom is a full function customer service platform, and we really built the kind of core on it, on AI, uh, but obviously focused on how you can combine AI and human support to really give exceptional service. I have been involved in customer service for over 35 years, so I've seen quite a few changes, and I'm really excited by the opportunity to actually apply AI and transform the customer experience. Yeah, super excited about this space. Awesome. And then uh, Christian Grossman, uh, the CEO at Beekeeper. Thank you very much, Bryce, for the invitation. Hi, everyone. So at Beekeeper, we deal with frontline workers and enabling them with technology. As you all know, frontline work is really hard and they have been long forgotten when it comes to digitalization. So we're bringing technology to them. Uh, the frontline is the face of any company towards customers, supporting them, helping them. So excited to talk about how AI is shaping that side of the customer support. Awesome, awesome. So as you can see, we have experts in this space. So super excited to dive in, deeper into this. So I got some really good, intriguing questions here for you guys. Um, but to, to jump it off, Sam, where where does one um, where does a SaaS platform begin when looking to integrate AI into its customer support for the first time? I think it depends on how big you want to go, right? So uh, I know companies that have started with one huge project. You know, they've said, right, we want to automate ten percent, twenty percent of our incoming emails, and they've done a full end to end project with their you know, data scientists, AI specialists gone through an entire process, probably takes them a few months, um, you know, and that's great if you've got the tools to do it, either in-house or you've got an external vendor you can work with, you know, that can be a great way to go. Um, the other option, which is what we went with originally at Deal, was we wanted to start small, so we chose some, you know, low-hanging fruit, some easy, some easy items to solve, and we said, okay, you know, today, you know, a couple of years ago, AI, you had to work with a vendor. It was difficult to do it. Today, you've got right. open APIs from open AI that you can just use and implement, you know, really quickly on some small flows. Um, you know, so I think it depends on, on, on where you want to go. I think it's so much easier today to start with something small um, than, it ever, than it ever has been. Yeah, that's a fair point. I mean, there's a lot of platforms out there that, that kind of helps you. You're not starting from the ground up and, and building something net new. Yeah. Yeah. yeah awesome. I think, you know, one... Go 
Yeah, no, I was just going to say, I think one clear thing, and Sam, you kind of touch on, a, I think you really have to have a clear objective. What are you trying to achieve in implementing mm. AI? It's not AI for AI's sake, it's actually some, you know, end in, in, in sight. Like, for example, you're trying to allow yourself to scale your support operation without having to necessarily add a huge amount of, of additional resources to the team. Are you actually trying to transform the customer experience in some way? So it's actually a much better customer experience, uh, you know, out of the gate for your customers. So, you know, be very clear about what you're trying to achieve as part of the strategy, as opposed to, as I say, just AI for AI's sake. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, that's 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 huge. Like, you know, a lot of companies are wanting to jump in the AI, uh, AI band, you know, bandwagon the boat, right? And just doing it for AI for AI's sake. It's like, okay, cool, yeah. we can do this. <laughs> we have AI in our name now, we're good, right? <laughs> um, but I yeah. think having that, that specific plan in place will allow you to really hone in of what type of AI you really need, yeah. right? And what's the actual goal you're trying to achieve? And will AI even achieve that goal, right? So, awesome. Absolutely. Yeah, cool. So I guess the second question, and this is the, this is the one that I'm really intrigued in as well, is because this, this has to deal with the human aspect of services, right? So. You know, how does AI and customer support contribute to enhancing the user experience without compromising that that human aspect of the service? So, Christian, I'm interested to hear your thoughts on that one. Yeah, sure. So I think the the magic that AI can do to the point of before is really handle the groundwork, the things that are difficult, the things that take time and elevate the humans to do what humans can do best, which is human connection at that emotional touch, really connect with the customer. So I think there's a lot of freeing up of time and repetitive tasks of agents to tackle more complex, maybe emotionally nuanced uh, issues. So I think AI is more of an enhancement and, a, and an extension to free up humans from, from what is difficult, time-consuming, and repeating so that they can focus on what we humans the best. Yeah, yeah just that makes sense. Right. I mean, uh, yeah, I, I think we focus a lot on AI. It's just another teammate in, at one level, but it's the teammate that's mm -hmm. handling all of that mundane grunt work, as, as Christian mentioned. And I think it is really important to understand that the type of work that comes through to your human support team is it's going to be different as a result. Like a lot of changes in this world when you take it that, that mundane work. And you really got to think intentionally around the customer journey across, like if the interface with a bot initially, and then perhaps you hand over to some automation layer and then you hand over to human support. You got to really think through that journey and, and design it very intentionally, you know, so that you are actually using your human support team in, in the right way. Even simple things like if you yeah. go through that AI bot automation, can you actually route the conversation or the case or the ticket, the person who has the right skills? So, Again, once the, your customers engage with the human support team, they're really getting a subject matter expert who can solve the, the, the problem that they're encountering. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think generally when we talk about AI today in, in the general space, most people are thinking about conversational AI like ChatGPT, yeah. but actually, you yeah. know, there's a huge amount that AI can do even on the back end, right? So it, mm -hmm. it, it only improves customer service if I can get the ticket to the right person faster and give them tools to better solve the issue. The interaction with the customer yeah. is the same with that same human, um, but I've just you know assigned the ticket and 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 half the resolution time or the first response time using you know AI analysis tools behind the scenes. Yeah, and, and that's a fair point. And that's a great point, right? Because a lot of people when they're thinking about AI is a human to machine interaction, right? But that's not necessarily the case all the time, right? So some of the stuff that I talk to my clients about is um, when you're looking at AI, you're looking at 10xing the productivity of your team, right? So that AI piece, like in the um, you know customer service realm, is you know as well um, the customer smart realm is like the research, like the AI can do the research based on the tickets that are coming in. And then it just learns and learns and learns. And then it can basically provide that, that customer support uh, representative, the valuable information where they would normally take 10, 15, 20, maybe an hour worth of time of work to try to research and find that information. It's already just handed to them while the ticket was created. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So you're not losing that human interaction with your customers, with your clients you're actually improving that human interaction because then 
your customer support rep has the uh, has the focus now to have that human to human relationship conversation and things like that. So, so it's not compromising it; it's enhancing it. So that's pretty. That's a very interesting. Very very interesting. Cool. Um, so the next one, Declan, I have here is is when you're measuring the ROI of AI driven customer support. You know, what specific metrics should SaaS platforms really prioritize? Yeah, that's a, an interesting question. There's different dimensions to it. And again, it goes back a little bit to what are you actually trying to achieve uh, you mm-hmm. know, in terms of, of uh, your strategy with AI? Uh, like some people do focus on the cost uh, benefits of implementing AI. Like so a very simple example, like we've seen quite a significant increase in customer demand over the course of a year, but we've been able to effectively absorb that purely through uh, applying AI at the front end and we haven't had to grow the team substantially. So again, looking at the economics of how you deliver support is certainly one of the key ROI aspects of, of implementing AI. Um, you know, and some of the, the metrics that feed into that, you got to look at your kind of resolution rate up front, like uh, how many conversations or cases or tickets are you resolving automatically, you know, and yeah. you, you know, the things like engagement rate as well, or involvement rate, like you know, how many of your transactions can actually benefit from AI. Like there's sometimes you won't want to use AI, you may have a premier support proposition where you actually want people to come through to humans straight away. You know, so the, the URI is very dependent from, from business to business. Uh, you know, certainly, you know, there are some organizations that are using it in terms of being able to move to 24 by 7 support without actually to have having a human support team. Mm-hmm. So today they've no 24 by 7, it's only office hours. At least when AI bots are getting you know, 30, 40, 50, 60% of your kind of uh, questions are issues being answered out of the box 24 by 7. So again, it's very specific thing to organizations, but I can encourage people to think very creatively around the return of investment. Even simple things, if you can use AI to speed up, for example, resolving customers' issues when they're on a trial with you, you can probably influence the, the, the trial to customer ratio. Uh, mm-hmm. In early life customers, again, if you're using AI to give a better a quicker customer experience, you can probably you know move the customer to value quicker, and they're kind of tangible things depending on your business, particularly fast forward that you can measure and feed back into the business. Say this is how our kind of reworking of AI, sorry, reworking of customer support using AI has actually delivered value to the business. Nice, yeah, yeah. Reem. Yeah. Maybe to build on what you said, Declan, totally agree, and I think it's still important to look at the classical KPIs from satisfaction scores, yeah. resolution times, cost per yeah. ticket, and almost A-B mm-hmm. test the AI influenced ones versus the non. Yeah. And you get to see really impressive uh, changes. So we've seen from CSAT scores, skyrocket, lower costs to yeah. compared to classical approaches. So yeah. yeah. And the other thing as well, like where AI can play in, apart from just the conversational front end piece, like I've you always been frustrated with things like CSAT because you only get a sample of your customers who will actually respond to your survey and, and give you feedback. And now with AI in the back end, you can actually infer the customer CSAT score, the customer experience score, and you can do that across 100% of your tickets, et cetera. So again, that's a big change in terms of how AI is feeding into the world of support and how you manage support. So being able to have this inferred CSAT score across every single customer, every single conversation in their case. That's really powerful. And again, it's another application of AI in, in the background. Yeah, I was going to have one more thing about, I uh, completely agree with that. Something we've been looking at as well is, you know, how do we automate that CSAT? Because that's a yeah. huge problem that all customer supporters had forever. Yeah. Uh, yes. that, 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 that's huge. Uh, I think something we look at as well a lot is what we call deflection rate, which is how much, how many cases AI is able to solve. Mm-hmm. And I think there's a huge change in that when we're talking about like sort of conversational chat GPT style AI, which is attacking, you know, what we call sort of the long tail of AI. Whereas in a classic scenario, you would say, okay, where do I have the highest number of cases and the smallest number of requests? So I have loads of people asking about login issues and I don't know, reset password or you know, reset or get a new pin number for my card, for example. But actually you have a huge amount of requests that are just split across a hundred different other topics, but you never get to them because it's too much work to attack every single one of those. And now with the new AI, you can sort of throw that long tail at a sort of generalized model like a gpt star model and just say you know figure out the rest of that basically so you can attack yeah. a huge amount more 
space uh, or, or amount of topics than you ever could before. Mm. Absolutely. Or the other thing you do is you know, really use AI to help you uh, understand where you need to focus on continuous improvement. So as an example, we now analyze every single conversation post uh, the event and we generate what we call a product league table that we feed back into our product teams around which part of the product is actually having most impact from a customer service point of view. And that allows us then to really kind of hone in on where we can drive the, the best improvement. And sometimes, you know, it may not necessarily be a high volume, but it's a high impact area. And again, mm -hmm. using AI, mm -hmm. you can bring to pull out those characteristics, not just about volume, sometimes it's around understanding the impact. Uh, so it's really changed the relationship that we've had with the product teams as well. Like we're actually providing far more insights um, for the product team and we're actually becoming a much more viable voice to the customer um, kind of support organization. Yeah, that's a, all those points are fantastic. <laughs> so uh, yeah, a hundred percent. So um, there's a lot of avenues that, that uh, AI can impact the ROI. I mean, you can, yeah. you can see it, you can measure it. Right. But again, I think this also goes right back to the very first comment of you got to know what you're targeting when implementing AI, yeah. right? If you don't know Absolutely. what you're targeting, yeah. then you're not going to be able to measure that at ROI. Correct, right? yeah. And, and I, I would be dependent on the business you're in, you know, your, your state of evolution, mm -hmm. you know, how mature you are as an operator. There's lots of factors feed in. So unfortunately, there isn't kind of a playbook here. Like it's something we're all developing the playbook as we go along in this space. But I think there's some really intriguing ROI uh, aspects to AI that we're only beginning to discover at this point. Maybe maybe we should consult uh, the AI <laughs> to know <laughs> uh, So I think this 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 next question kind of Sam kind of uh, ties right into that right. So uh, into the ROI aspect of things, and it's you know how can SaaS platforms use AI to optimize their customer support workflows and reduce the operational cost. Yeah, so I think it comes into a lot of stuff that we've already been talking about. You know, the classic one, you know, is is automating support. So it's, you know, creating chat mm -hmm. reports and, and automating responses to emails, you know, as much taking as much of your customer information and questions that you know you can respond to, you know, without doing too much work and automating automating that response wherever it can be automated, while giving them an option to get to a real human being, you know, if it's if it's if it's really necessary. Right. Um, so I think obviously that's that's the main one that a lot of companies, you know, for good reasons are off, are highly focused on right now because you know people are already used to talking to bots. It's not something new. You know, people understand automated responses and things, so they appreciate just getting much better and, and focused responses. And you can combine mm -hmm. that with you know real customer data. So you know, in a classic bot environment, they ask you know about a question. And they get a knowledge base answer right now they can ask a question we can understand exactly what we're talking about we can go and look up you know we deal with a lot of payments or contracts so we can go up and look up their exact payment information you know mm -hmm. they say when is my payment due i can say well this payment that you made yesterday is due in three days time because you're in turkey and there's a holiday there and therefore you know we can give really really dedicated specific information um which customers you know appreciate and, and can sometimes be more accurate than a human being who is you know might might make a mistake uh is also another good point of it um i think using sort of you know intelligence on the back end which we spoke about as well you know intelligent routing getting the right ticket to the right person um quicker um doing sort of sentiment analysis and those sort of things you know um to to uh to go better better support for the customer and just sort of any you know, any additional process automation you know and you know you know a really tiny process that we have that saves us you know a decent amount of money each month is we auto close tickets where the customer just says thanks got it confirmed you know any sort of responses like that which you know waste a, you know a few hours you know every day every week for each customer support agent so you know, add all that up and it's three mm -hmm. percent of the incoming tickets we get each month right so you know all of that stuff um automating it on the front end for the customer you know routing and better times of flow and processes on the back end you know all of that results in a significant you know re reduction in, in operational costs yeah but, uh, all i think great another points. interesting yeah. Another interesting aspect of the whole process of support is there are some changes occurring. Like at the end of the day, AI is only as good as the knowledge or content that it has access to. 
and you need to look at your content and knowledge. It's kind of a, a living thing that you, you need to kind of refine all the time. And like we've introduced processes where at the end of a, a conversation, like basically we AI kicks back in and can present to the agent, hey, we think this is how our this is the question the customer asks. We think this is the response. Is this correct? Is this kind of good enough to go back in to our kind of knowledge base? And then it's it's part of the AI layer going forward. So we we kind of have a philosophy like we'd like the first time you solve a problem to be the last time you solve a problem. Um, and we're and we're trying to build on that culture. And part of that is allowing agents the time to develop content and feed it back into the system. So again, we look at the economics of, of delivering support and your key metrics, like stuff like average handle time is actually going to go up in this world, right? In terms of the stuff that the humans handle. But it's a flywheel effect, you're feeding knowledge back in, you're handling the more complex issues, et cetera. But again, when you're thinking about planning for your supporting, the dimensions or the metrics change quite a bit in, in this new world. So it's really intriguing yeah. space to look at and like lots of opportunities to, I think, be innovative. Awesome. That was great answers. Um, spectacular. So Christian, uh, um, one last question for you guys um, on this, and this is more of the looking ahead, like this is the future aspect, is looking ahead and seeing like in what innovative ways do you guys see AI further transforming customer support in SaaS platforms over the next decade or so? Interesting one. I think um, the more we switch from being reactive and kind of like reacting to what is coming from the customer to being more predictive and trying to be ahead of the curve, I think that's where probably the future will go, right? If you can already find out or or through other type of signals, say, hey, this customer is going to have an issue with this. Maybe there's a piece of content. Maybe there's a prompt that I can give them so that they don't bump into it. I think that's probably where, if I was to imagine 10 years down the road, that's probably where, where things will go to really not even allow things to escalate or to come up to customer support, but have almost like a predictive customer support ahead of, of everything. Yeah. I don't know what what the others think. <laughs> I, I, th I, think I think 10 years is, is far too far down the line. We're looking at the number of changes that we've had over the last year. You know, I feel like there's been more advanced in the last year. Mm -hmm. You know, than we've had technology-wise, you know, the last 20. So so I think, yeah. you know, looking further ahead than one to three years at this point is uh, yeah. <laughs> the maximum we can we can look at. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, I completely agree with the predictive uh, side of it. And I think we're just going to see, you know, more and more capabilities coming out, you know, from the big mm -hmm. vendors out there like OpenAI. You know, I just started to play last week with the new feature that you can now voice chat with mm -hmm. chat gpt i don't know if you've all tried it but it's fantastic it's you know you just you know just have the complete fluid conversation um and it you know and it's got you know it, it's a nuanced voice and it answers in the right way you know i got it to read my my son a story and it did all the different voices and like all different <laughs> things it's, it's incredible right so yeah. you know translate that to customer support mm -hmm. um being able to use all the data and information knowledge that we have but you know in a much more fluid yeah. way talking to a customer you know and there's going to be 10 more advances like that yeah. that, that we're going to pick up as we go along um yeah, I couldn't agree more. I mean, I think looking 10 years out is challenging, but even in the short term, like in the next year or two, like there's lots that's going to happen. Like predictive and, you know, practical support is absolutely going to be key and AI will enable it. Also, I think we're going to see, like, I, I think AI chatbots today are what I call general purpose. Like they're looking at the total body of knowledge you have, trying to answer a question. But I think we're going to come up with kind of more refined bots that are looking at particular tasks that you're undertaking, maybe constrained to particular knowledge. So you're giving very precise, very clear Answers and and in that context, probably being able to handle more complex issues as well, mm -hmm. uh, like even simple things from a complexity point of view. Like we have dev docs that we we issue for parts of our platform, and we're now feeding in that into our AI layers that we can actually handle far more complex questions through AI. I think that was one of the questions in the Q and A. Like can we actually handle complex uh, situations? Absolutely, mm -hmm. and we we've seen that happen out of the box with our AI chatbot, and then we're actually kind of uh, giving it more opportunity for success by feeding in the right content uh, over time. Yeah, I think that's 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 paramount. I mean, it's a great point. You know, ten years from now, like who knows, right? So who knows what will be around? I think 
uh, Moore's law is kind of being accelerated right now when, when in the AI space. It's just yeah. completely just exponentially going up. And, um, uh, you know, I think the predictive aspect is huge. I think that's what's going to happen. You're going to all of a sudden they're going to base on even the interactions that um, your, you know, the, uh, the, the SaaS customers are, are having within the SaaS platforms. That AI bot could be just learning the whole entire time and building that data and getting like, how are they interacting? And then all of a sudden uh, maybe the logins go down or maybe, you know, they're not using a particular feature or function as much as they used to. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it's going to predict and present a solution or present, yeah. uh, you know, a trigger to, to an internal rep, to a customer support rep, maybe an internal ticket of like, Hey, this isn't working right now. So being proactive, even on the, um, on the technical side of the fence of like, you yeah. know, this is going down. So instead of having your customers report an outage, your product is going to be able to be more proactive at that. So, you know, those are some of the things that I was thinking. And then um, even on even on our side of the fence, um, even predictive churn, right? Uh, you know, understanding like, oh my gosh, this client is no longer logging in as much as they used to or something along those lines. And then you're going to be more predictive and you'll be able to save more clients, rather than, you know, being reactive when they're wanting to churn or, or take their business elsewhere. So awesome. That's great. So yeah, um, we have a couple minutes left here to be able to uh, open it up for a Q&A for all the uh, everybody that's here. So you guys, if you want to, you can uh, chime in um, on the Q&A portion of the Zoom, or if you want, unmute and uh, we can take your questions from there. So we had uh, uh, Declan answered the one from Craig already. Craig, you're welcome. That's you know, oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Declan <laughs> did it for me. Uh, so uh, we have one from Mohammed Akasa. Uh, thoughts on AGI? I I I'm can take. I mean, AGI <laughs> is generally sort of you know general, artificial general intelligence, which me which uh, I, I I understand it to mean actually being a human yeah. being. Um, I, I think from my research, at least, it's, it's very, 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 very different from what we see now. It's not it's not just going to be like the next version. It's not going to be chat. GP, it's not going to be GPT-6. It's going to be AGI. It's it's a whole <laughs> it's a completely different set of technology a completely. It's going to be, you know, it's going to be a complete it's going to be a new a new company that's going to do well, open AI versions to that. That's my belief. I don't think it's really the next step. Uh, once you get into the nitty gritty of how the current AI is actually working, yeah. it's not. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, uh, I think there's a couple of presentations out there that try and describe the kind of technologies behind LLM and ChatGPT in very simple terms. If we actually look at it, it is quite basic. We're still really at the you know the the tip of the iceberg of what AI can do. So a like, full AGI type environment. Like, uh, it's on time off, I think. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. Oh, who knows? I mean, the way the way things are going, it, it might be in the next <laughs> five years. So, uh, you know, that, that yeah. veil that we can't see beyond. So <laughs> that's that's great. Awesome. So Tim's got a question. Uh, what have you found to be more impactful? Uh, I think it's a great question. Customer facing AI resources like chatbots or internal facing tools uh, that assist the agents? I think it's sort of I'm happy to... the, sorry they can go go ahead. No, no, fire, no, 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 you're fired. Yeah, no, I was gonna say it really depends on the on the pain you're experiencing. So if for example we, we had more more customers on the asking for this type of internal chatbots, so to support their own employees, so not not agents, but think about like an HR chatbot. And that's something that just with Typical chatbot uh, technologies will only get you so far, but with AI, you can just open up a whole new dimension. So we've seen a lot of gains and impact on, on that side, but it really depends on organizations struggling with those type of problems. And getting back to the very initial question, depends yeah. what your needs are, what your strategy and objectives are. And I think that's where you can find certainly the, the most impact, starting where, where the pains are, where the problems are. And I think that's where, where AI can definitely help. 
Yeah, I agree. It does depend on the problem space that you're in. Uh, you know, again, just for kind of reference, we initially looked at AI features within our inbox that were for more that internal use case before we looked at the customer facing features. But we actually pivoted quite quickly to really accelerate the customer facing aspects of AI because we saw the greater return there immediately. Uh, but we're now circling back to look at AI features within the inbox and how we can en enhance those and improve those. Uh, so. You know, certainly for it for our initial impact and initial kind of ROI, the customer facing was better for us in terms of our focus. But again, it is very specific to I think to organizations and where they are. And ultimately they said, what what problem are you are you trying to solve? That's always the key question. Yeah. Yeah, I think it I think it I think customer facing is for many companies the quicker ROI because it's the one where there's a bigger difference between what was possible and what is possible. So I think, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. there was no way in the past to automatically detect well what the customer was talking about and provide a personalized response, right? So that's been a huge change. Well, on the back end, there were already a huge number of tools that did do a lot of stuff. Might not have done it as well, might have been extra work, but like, you know, I've created in the past for sort of four or five different customer support centers, um, you know, automatic routing based on you know certain tags or certain things it's a big complicated sort of bot that you have to build to do it but it was possible mm -hmm. it's just now much easier but it was possible whereas now you're when the customer facing side you're doing stuff that you could have just never you could have never done so it's it's giving a much bigger jump up on on that side of things i think yeah, even on the lower hanging fruit type of things that you guys were talking about like the you know the same you were mentioning like the um invoicing right i mean that's a low-hanging fruit that could take uh, uh an agent a little time to find and research and things like that now with the ai it's able to go back into the database and pull everything forward so and that's a quick low-hanging fruit yeah, exactly. type of piece yeah. nice um nick's got a question um uh, so basically what does anybody have any best practices on writing the knowledge base articles uh that's consumed by ai and then following that it's like okay well do you have any structure so when the agent provides the feedback to update those uh documents to make sure that everything is in line i think those are great questions so yeah i i can certainly kind of answer that we actually developed a blog post around how do you build your content for um for ai so there, there is go. information out there but some very simple things like remember the machine consuming this so the more structured you can make the content the more likely the machine is actually able to use the content. Or even simple things, if you feed in your FAQ document, like very often FAQ is like you ask a question and it's a yes or no answer, which is fine for a human. He, a human can, can interpret what that yes and no related to. If it's a machine reading an FAQ, you actually need to write out the answer. It's not just a yes or no. You've got to put, put the full context in there if you really want AI to understand uh, the, the answer correctly. So there's simple things like that. Or if you have different target audiences, might have a premium support uh, customer base you know, versus your standard customer base, and you may want different answers for those two uh, customer bases, make sure your content is structured so it's very clear for AI. You can actually really interpret, here's the answer. If it's a premier customer, here's the answer. If it's a standard customer. Just simple things like that. you got to really think through the, the structure of, of the content. And I'd say, you know, we do have a blog that goes through a whole lot of, of other considerations. But it's a really good question. And it's actually one area where uh, I, I don't think people quite appreciate the level of effort you got to put into managing the content to make AI successful, because ultimately it's only as good as the content it, it has access to. And the second part of the question about feeding back in, so in our system we have a, a function called snippets. So I, I think I described earlier, at the end of the conversation, AI will kick back in and say, I think this is the question the customer asked, I think this is the... Uh, the answer, and then the agent can make decisions that get fed back into the content loop. Uh, and as part of the body of knowledge then that we're using going forward. Uh, so that was, that has worked really well for us in generating new content over time. Fantastic answer. <laughs> and the ball, so, you know, <laughs> if, uh, and anybody else, I would highly advise you go go seek after that blog post. Mm -hmm. awesome. um, so let's see here. Um, I think we have time for one more. Uh, um, uh, Alexi's got a question. What are your thoughts on the capabilities of the customer facing AI to tackle sens the sensitive part of the handover, uh, meaning recognizing the customer's frustration and the intent to go to get connected with a human? I think 
related. Anybody want to add to that? But <laughs> I, I think that's exactly the the border where AI and human kind of like should come together. So it's definitely a really important a uh, point to to consider where I mean it's about recognizing emotions, recognizing tones going off the baseline. Uh, all of those non-trivial things, but I feel with the current AI capabilities, we're starting to to have a good grip of that. So it's certainly much better than what we had before with other knowledge-based systems and so on. So I, I am excited about uh, giving AI the chance to hand over to the human. And I think it's also more of a parameter a configuration on how early do you want to pass it on, right? And you might want to start with something that passes it on as early as some signal is detected, rather than waiting for a large escalation, right? Um, yeah. That would be mm -hmm. some some initial thoughts on it, but I'm sure Sam and they can have. Yeah, <laughs> well, we're we're playing around with it at the minute. So um, within our AI chatbot, which we call Finn, it's actually generating kind of a view of the customer sentiment. Um, you know, so again, we have some sense of how is the customer really frustrated, really angry, etc. And that information is available to the agent who. Will ultimately takes over the the conversation if it goes through to human so we're kind of testing that at the moment you know uh is it as good as it needs to be probably not quite yet but we're, we're getting there but we're actually getting some good signals around of how frustrated the customer is and, and it's the ai bot that's kind of generating that for us yeah yeah i think it's that's about huge. looking at like building on like a sort of you know sort of basically building like a dedicated model around detecting when something needs to be passed over to a human being right so in a classic scenario we might have created some automation that says i don't know if the customer clicks start over more than once or twice or, or they click something specific or they've clicked a certain number of times you know you and you have to create this very standardized model which obviously doesn't work for everyone and there might be a combination of someone who only clicked once but said something or chose a specific topic you know and that's impossible to do on a case-by-case -case basis so but if you feed all that data into a you know a machine learn what what in the past we would call a machine learning model and now it's just yeah. ai and then let yeah. that figure it out and say okay you know this customer for whatever metrics that we don't even need to define but the model has decided that this customer you know needs to be transferred to an agent then it should be um nice yeah and i think that's that's again part of the next evolution being able to to get that nuanced piece of just human interaction and you know understanding the human um you know intent i guess is the best way so but uh hey guys i, I really appreciate it um i think we're pretty much out of time right now but a huge thanks uh to our panelists uh and everybody who joined in and chimed in with questions there were great questions uh, even better answers um we've got some more cool discussions coming up with the ai series so you definitely stick around for those keep an eye out for for the next sessions uh, i'm bryce and i can't wait to catch you all next time and dive deeper into the ai realm so take care everybody appreciate it Bye. Thank you.